Good morning, everybody. Once again, your friend Dr. Salim is here with you guys. Uh, today's topic, uh, I think it's a little uh, important because of a few things. If you are a trainer, if you are an ultrasound technologist, if you are an ultrasound specialist, or if you are sitting for one of the national or international exams, for example, like CCI, or we can say ARDMS or some other exams, uh, you wanna have, um, you are sitting for some kind of examination and you're in the phase of uh, preparation. So uh, today it's important to have the knowledge of um, positive ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound. It just came to my mind if, uh, because a few things I just collected uh, from uh, different areas, from different books and uh, put it together. So around 15 bullet points I collected for uh, to have some differences between the continuous wave ultrasound and pulse wave ultrasound. Which one is which? Or, or we can say what things we can do with the continuous wave ultrasound and what we can do with pulse wave ultrasound. It means where we use continuous wave or where do we need it? And also where we need uh, pulse wave ultrasound. So let's talk about them. There are, there are a few things. Uh, maybe there's a lot, but uh, to my mind, I just came 15 points. Um, and let me share with you guys. For example, we all know we have uh, pulse wave ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound. Now, what are the differences between them? Now, number one, if we come to the imaging part, like uh, I can say to see the image, the pictures. So number one, pulse wave ultrasound will produce a picture because it's a pulse, it's a short pulse that will have a picture. All of our probes, all the imaging probes we're using, they will have image. So number one, it's a picture. Continuous wave ultrasound will not produce a picture. That is just for the velocity. We are looking to have a velocity of some a flow. For example, when we are looking for the flow, so we wanna look for the velocity. So number one, pulse wave can have a picture, Continuous wave cannot. That's one thing. Secondly, pulse wave ultrasound will use a one crystal system, but continuous wave ultrasound will use a two crystal system. Now, what's the difference between them? The difference is that one crystal system, which pulse wave ultrasound is using, that will send the pulse and will wait for the listening, for the reflection. The same crystal or the same active element has to wait for the reflection to come back. And then they will send the next pulse. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, actually. So they have to send a pulse and wait for the coming. And then after that, when they receive the information from the first pulse, then they will send the next one. So it is one-to-one -one ratio. And then we can say so with the pulse wave ultrasound, they use one crystal system. And the continuous wave, they use two crystal system. It means one crystal will continuously send the pulses and the other one will continuously receive the pulses. So there is no gap, there is no break, there is no pause between them. There is no breaks. Continuously they're sending that one, that is the job, the task of that one crystal to send the pulses continuously. And the other crystal has another job to receive all the reflection. So it's two crystal system, that's two. Number three, the sensitivity. Now, the pulse wave, the sensitivity of a transducer, we're looking from the number of cycles inside of the pulse. Now, if we look to continuous wave ultrasound, so like, as I said, there is no gap. It's a long pulse, too many cycles on that like a lot cycles on that one pulse. So they are very sensitive because that is the task of that one crystal to send continuously the pulses and the other one has to receive it. So it means they are not blinking. They're not stopping. They're not turned off. They're on always. So that is more sensitive. Continuous wave ultrasound is more sensitive compared to Pulse wave ultrasound, because pulse wave ultrasound have bricks, like we said earlier. So those are three. Number four, when we come to Doppler, pulse wave Doppler and continuous wave Doppler. So pulse wave Doppler, also we can use it for the evaluation of velocity, just to look for the uh, velocity evaluation of the flow. Now, 
as we earlier said, that the positive ultrasound is using one crystal system. So it means it's not that sensitive too, correct? So in this case, positive ultrasound is good to use it for those velocities which are less than two meter per second. But if the velocity is more than two meter per second, higher than this, then we should use continuous wave ultrasound because just like earlier I said, you're using two crystal system. So that's number four. Keep in mind that number four was that pulse wave ultrasound will you will is more useful when our flow velocity is less than two meter per second, and then continuous wave ultrasound or we can say continuous wave Doppler is more sensitive or that's more useful when we are using this on the velocities, the flow velocity, which are more than two meter per second. If we use, so number five, number five is the artifact. Now we get one artifact in pulse wave ultrasound and we get another artifact in the continuous wave ultrasound. Now for the pulse wave ultrasound, we get the artifact, it's called aliasing artifact. What does it mean? Actually, it's a long topic. We will talk about that some other time, but just quickly, I will tell you, we when we do all these evaluation of the flow velocities, so we are looking for the Negvest limit and Negvest limit is actually half of PRF and PRF is pulse repetition frequency. The color bar is in simple, the color bar you see, or when you do your spectral wave farm, there will be a bar close to you. So the half of this is called Negvest limit. If the flow velocity is more than what your scale is, what your P uh, negress limit is, then it will experience aliasing artifact. And what is that? You will get uh, with the color, like you will get a mixture of color. You will get a towards shift and you will get a wave shift together. That will be a mixture. So that's an artifact which represent a wrong a picture, wrong image. Like I can say, like a turbulent flow. If it's a color flow or color Doppler image, then that will represent like you are looking for uh, something you're representing that's a turbulence or turbulent flow, post denotic flow. Or if it's a spectral wave farm, then the peak systolic will be seen below the baseline. So it is aliasing artifact, which is experienced with the pulse wave ultrasound or pulse wave Doppler. Now, with continuous wave ultrasound, the same number five, the continuous wave, we get artifact, it's called range ambiguity artifact. What is that? Range ambiguity artifact is, so we get with the continuous wave usage, it will not give you a specific information for, for example, we said this is a peak systolic, this is end diastolic. No, it will not give you those information. It will give you the average of everything. So why? Because number six difference, it's including, because it will explain number five, actually. So number six is the gate or sample volume size. For the pulse wave ultrasound, we have a specific sample volume, a gate. Like there is a specific gate for them. You can make it bigger or smaller. But at a continuous wave ultrasound, the entire cursor is the gate. So now this cursor from the top to the bottom of the picture, where they hit the flow, it will catch the flow and will give you the average of all velocities because you may have experience of uh, venous flow, arterial flow, a huge high pressure vessel, a small, tiny, slow flow, and that will give you all together one average. So that's why we get the range ambiguity artifact with the continuous wave ultrasound. And we get the aliasing artifact with the pulse wave ultrasound. So these are number six. Now, number seven, with the continuous wave ultrasound, like before I said, there is no gap. It means there's no listening time. That specific crystal is not listening. That listening is somebody else's job. Like I said, there are two crystal systems and the continuous wave ultrasound. So that's why the first crystal job is just to send the pulses, not to receive it. That will not receive. The other crystal will receive it. So there is no listening time. There is no off time. There is no reception on the same crystal for the same crystal in the continuous wave. But on the pulse wave ultrasound, there is a listening time. There is an image creation time. There is an off time. There is a reception on the same crystal. So that's number seven. Number eight, very important. Damping material, 
or backing material. These are materials we use this for to make our pulses shorter because the shorter the pulse, the better the image quality. So when we make the, the it's it's a powder shape uh, material in the transducer and the probe inside. So pretend it, if this is a probe inside the electricity comes and there is this damping material or damping material that will make the pulse shorter like with the bricks small small bricks so there are damping material or backing material in the pulse wave ultrasound transducers but there is no damping material or backing material in the continuous wave ultrasound uh, transducers so that is number eight i believe so number seven uh, sorry number nine number eight nine number nine with a continuous wave ultrasound, like earlier I said, we we measure only peak systolic. There is no end diastolic, and that's the average of the flow. But with the pulse wave ultrasound, we can specifically look for the peak systolic velocity and end diastolic velocity. That will give us both specifically. Now, one more thing, number ten, I believe so. Duty factor. Duty factor is actually the percentage of the time the machine is spending on the sending pulses. So, or I can say, this is a time, this is a percentage of a time where the machine is firing the pulse. The machine is active. And I mean by the activation that it is sending the pulse to the tissue. So that is the transmission time. I'm talking about the transmission. So any transmission time, is actually we're talking about the duty factor time. That's the percentage of the time. So for the pulse wave ultrasound, the duty factor is less than 1%. The machine spend less than 1% of the time on the transmission. So it means the machine is spending more than 99% of time on the listening reception, receiving, reflection, machine is listening. So, but oppositely, in continuous wave ultrasounds, the duty factor is 100%, or you can say more than 100%. It's actually 100% is 100%, because like earlier I said, it's using two crystal system. So that crystal, which is, which job is to sending the pulse continuously. So that pulse is continuously going on. That is the job. So the whole time for that crystal is to send the job continuously. There's another one who is receiving it. So we're talking about the, the, the transmission time. So this is a transmission. 100% or more than 100% time is spending the machine on the trend. Let's put it 100%. So it's sending 100% of the time on that. So that is the difference between them. Now, uh, I think it's uh, number 11, I can say. Now, the pulse, the size of the pulse. Pulse wave ultrasound will have short pulses, means it may have specifically what we do every day in the hospital or clinics, we're using these ultrasound to have the picture and images. We have less, uh, not, uh, we have our pulses are either made of two cycles or three cycles, not less than two cycles, not more than three cycles. But anyway, the pulses in pulse wave ultrasounds are short pulses. It's a countable cycles inside. But the, the pulses for the continuous wave ultrasound, it's a very long, uncountable cycles are there. So that's another thing. Now, uh, what else? Uh, bandwidth. The bandwidth for the pulse wave ultrasound is broader very big, broader, or we can say huge, but the bandwidth for the continuous wave ultrasound, it's a narrow because it just operate on, on a specific spot. That's why they're not producing any picture or image. Now, another difference. I don't know how many is this. I just messed up the counting, but the other difference between the pulse wave ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound is that the, the probes, the, the example of the transducers or probes. For the pulse wave ultrasound, all the imaging probes, if it's a linear sequential array, if it's the curvilinear sequential array, if it's the phase array transducer, if it's a convex probe, if it's a 
space convex array, if it's a vector probe, if it's a mechanical probe, if it's any of these probes which produce the picture, like the one we are daily using them, and we have a picture. Those are the example of positive ultrasound. And only we have two probes, so far I know, they are for the continuous rib ultrasound. We only use them for the velocity modes. For example, one it's called pencil probe, and most commonly we use that for the ABI, ankle brachial index. I will show you the picture. So those are the, the images, uh, those are just the velocity, just the spectral waveform. There is no picture inside. So that's the pencil probe. And the second probe, which I know, it's called PDAF probe. It's a blend modality. There is no picture. Most of the echocardiologists, they are using it for the velocity of, if they're looking for uh, aortic velocity or mitral high velocities. So it's a bland modality. There is no picture. So these are the examples of uh, these pictures. Or oh, we can say these probes. These are the two probes we said. And then... Um, there is, uh, if there is anything else, because this much, I just messed up the numbers. Let me show you guys uh, a picture which may help uh, to have the picture of the um, the two probes I just to told you guys. For example, this is one of the probe, we call it, we use this for the ABI, ABI machine. So this is the probe where you're just looking for the velocity. It will just give you, it's called the pencil, pencil probe or ABI machine, also you can call it. So it will just give me the velocity, like just a spectral waveform we will see. Nothing else with that one. That's one. And then if we're looking for another example of the spectral waveform, like I said earlier for you guys. So this is another picture. Like if you are using a pulse wave doppler, so this is also one of the example, like we have three examples of uh, the most common examples of the pulse wave ultrasound. One is the 2D imaging, 2D, you see the gray image. And we have a color doppler and we have a pulse wave doppler. So for the pulse wave doppler, like earlier I said, it will give you this peak systolic and endostolic, both. So they will be able to give you those two information. But with the continuous wave, only we get one information. And also just quickly, I will give you some information on the whiteboard regarding the cursor and sample volume, like just we said earlier, just to make it more clear. For example, if we look at here, if you're looking for, um, for example, just you're doing your echocardiography, correct? So pretend it, just pretend it, it's a, it's a two chamber view. Epical two chamber view. Now, if your probe is in this area, here is your probe, and your cursor is active like this. So that will show from here all the way to the bottom. You want to see only mitral inflow, mitral valve inflow, but this is a CWD or CW uh, continuous wave ultrasound or continuous wave Doppler you do. So in this case, the entire cursor, if you look at from this point all the way to this point, this is your sample volume or gate. So whatever get beneath to this, any flow, if it's a slow flow, if it's a high flow, like the lift, the, here is your lift atrium, for example, here is your lift ventricle. And then maybe there are some small, small vessels are here too. You have a ventricle flow, you have a mitral flow, you have a LA flow, you have a pulmonary veins flow, maybe some other small, small vessels, others that will give you just one flow. And that will be the average. Now, an opposite of this, we have a vessel, for example, like I said, this is one of the vessel. Now, if you do pulse wave Doppler for this, the sample volume is a specific area. For pretended, you will get just and just information from inside of the sample volume, the gate. So here the gate is adjustable. You can make this gate smaller and larger. That's another difference in pulse wave ultrasound or pulse wave Doppler, you can make the gate smaller or, or larger or bigger, but in continuous wave ultrasound, you cannot do anything with the continuous wave 
the gate or the sample value because the entire cursor is the gate. You can't change. If you see something, it's like a cross or maybe like a target sign. That's just a target. That's not the sample volume. Keep in mind, don't mistakenly call that a sample volume. That's not. The sample volume is the total gate from this area all the way to the bottom where you see this is the gate, not this specific area. That's not the gate. It's just a target sign only. We use it for that. So these are some differences between the pulse wave ultrasound and continuous wave ultrasound. So I hope this will help you if you do your uh, examination in a national or international exam, you are setting for that, any preparation. I hope that will help you. Or maybe if you do your practice, I hope that will help you. Now where to use which probe and why we use those probes. And also, uh, if you think that these information can help, I know it's a short clips, short videos, if this can help your friends, colleagues, um, classmates, uh, any healthcare providers, um, please don't hesitate to share the link with them. And again, tell them to subscribe the channel as well to get the next or upcoming notification. I will try my best to, to choose or to pick uh, those topics which in every day, daily, we, we, we face to them and uh, we're using these things. Thanks a lot and have a nice day and take care. I hope uh, this will help you guys. See you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.